Hello everyone, <laughs> and welcome to Claire's channel that I've been invited on to. My name's Ariel, <laughs> and Claire told me to do this introduction. Yeah. <laughs> As I feel like you do them way better than me every time. Direct. Yeah. Jump in. Mm -hmm. I am here visiting Claire because it's nearly Claire's wedding time. <laughs> oh my god. Two years later. Yeah, I know. A four year engagement is <laughs> finally coming to the to the close. <laughs> um so yeah, so this is gonna be a fun little video because we just had a super yeah. lovely day out. We had afternoon tea, mm -hmm. we bought many books, so we're gonna show you a montage, <laughs> Yeah. and we're gonna do a big book haul. Um, I realized my one book, but... <laughs> you have one book, but you also have many other different items, yes, I guess. Yes, exactly. And also, I definitely inspired at least one purchase which I think people who like my channel will be very happy to see yeah. that you brought. Yes, yes. So, just a little tease. But we will leave you to enjoy um, my, as always, my kind of book shopping videos. Yeah. Um, and some afternoon tea in the coal room. Um, and next, obviously, is next kind of Bloomsbury and Dalloway and very Bloomsbury kind yes. of inspired. Yes, yes. Um, so I hope you enjoy and we'll see you after you've watched it. <laughs>
you saw how lovely our day out was. I had booked this afternoon tea at the Coral Room because I happen to be Claire's maid of honor. Yeah. One of Claire's Actually, I maids didn't of honor. I didn't mention that. Oh, really? Ever? Well, I don't think. No. Why would you? I <laughs> suppose. Um, but I thought it would be really lovely to do an afternoon tea. And so when I was researching like which one, because there's obviously so many yeah. different places to go in London, I found the Coral Room and I thought it was such a lovely place because it has the Virginia Woolf connection. Yeah. Um, and it was really yeah. a very beautiful room. And we really liked all of the food we ate. Yeah. It there was wasn't a, a thing where we were like, eh, that one's not, no. It no. was like, we really enjoyed all the food. Yeah, it was just really lovely yeah um, we had like slight drama when i was like <laughs> moving tables and but in a good way yeah you know no we, you know we socially distant space that was the thing we um, were originally sat in a place where we didn't feel very covid safe because we were just really packed in and yeah. so i was like listen in north america you can i was gonna say <laughs> my advice to anybody go out somewhere with someone from America or Canada because, because if you're uncomfortable <laughs> well, they I, sort it out I, it's true like I was like should we ask to move tables and Claire was like oh no <laughs> even, even though we were both not liking it Claire was like this is, must be where we're supposed to sit I'm like ah so I went up and I just talked to the hostess and I was like, we'd be really, we'd be more comfortable in a different place if we could because of COVID. And like, yeah. how can you complain to yeah. that? And also they it had a lot of sense. tables that weren't being used. And so she was empty. like, absolutely no problem. Let's, let's move. What, so what I find so funny is that I think what I said to the time was like, I'm too British. That's, like, that's, that was the exact wording. I'm too, too British, British to, to complain. complain. <laughs> but I also think in my and mind. I was like, I'm not British. <laughs> Sneezed very loudly and <laughs> dropped a knife, a knife and, and, and your knife. sunglasses. We needed to get out of there. I well, we needed more space. I was for either more gonna, items to be yeah, dropped. It was very much like this is where I'm gonna die because <laughs> I just just want the ground to swallow me whole. So we at least got to leave so I could start anew. And I didn't drop anything there, so maybe it was anxiety. Um, yeah, I did get food everywhere, but to be fair. <laughs> You know, we had a great time. The was tea wonderful. was nice. The scones what were you, warm. The yeah. sandwiches were delicious. Really, really well, you had English breakfast. Yes. And I tried Darjeeling. Yes. It, um, which is kind of tasted the same. But I also um would really love to learn more about tea in general. Yeah. Um, so kind of be nice to kind of go back knowing what they had a white peony one, which I kind yeah. of regret not getting. But these pots of tea were massive. So big. So, so much tea. I don't think realistically I wouldn't have. I'm kind of glad I got one that, that was, you could yeah, drink the whole thing. I definitely thing. knew I was going to enjoy. Yeah. So anyway, I'm glad we reviewed it because when <laughs> I was watching, like I watched a lot of videos of like people going to the different afternoon tea locations. Oh. Um, it was, well, there was this one girl I watched who was review and had like a five star like system or oh, whatever. Wow. But she was like, gave one place a low rating right. because they had cold scones. Oh, interesting. And so it was a thing I was thinking about when we showed up. I was like, I wonder if they'll have cold scones. They didn't. I mean, they were no, warm. really nice. Nice. Because then it makes sense with the, you know, if you have clotted cream, it's kind of feels extra indulgent. And it yes. feels, it just feels fresh then. So even though you know they've just, warmed it up for a few minutes. It's just gone quickly in them and you, it feels like, oh my God, the baker has just finished mixing and it's up there. I you know, know that everyone here wants a book haul and we're just talking about Shit, clotted sorry. cream. Yeah, I actually, I also, I always have plain scones. Like I never put the extra stuff on. So this was exciting because I tried something new and I decided I am a plain Jane. So I'm okay. going to stick with my, my plain scone. But it was good to um, try. One thing I really want to mention really quickly is that this is obviously, um, I had an afternoon tea last week or whenever and when I was there I had a tea that I hadn't I just couldn't stop thinking about which was um the Fort Mason blend um and I kept talking about it even with Ariel yeah. which is kind of weird considering we, she was also thinking about afternoon tea I was like I just can't stop thinking about this ever afternoon tea at one of the Masons but we then obviously there's one in St. Pangos Station and Ariel did what Ariel does frequently when I go no it's I shouldn't buy it right she literally I remember what was so funny is that you took it I thought we had a above you. <laughs> I was like behind you, so I just plucked it. I am, we've realized, a foot taller basically <laughs> than Claire. <laughs> One of our original videos that I remember doing when you first came up seeing in York, and everyone was like, gosh, Ariel is so tall. And I was like, yes, she really is. <laughs> 
Um, but really, but, it's Claire's tiny. Yeah. No, yeah well, you know what? It's up. a little bit of the both. I think yes. I'm taller than people think I am, yes. and you're much shorter than people think much, you are, and so the shorter. distance. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is kind of it's like it says that like, orange blossom, but it's not. It doesn't taste like. It does have floral notes. I'm gonna get really into tea. The next time I'm gonna be like you're a tea ex uh, yeah, yeah. expert. Yeah, um, But we have now had a, a few cups of this, and it is just an absolute delight. But it's a very expensive habit for me now to not feel anything. Yes, to not, it's true because Claire was like, I I want, so I just plucked it and it bought really, it and gave it to Claire. Honestly, I think I want to try lots of different of their tea. They do like a tea tasting experience, but this was such a good purchase. And we've had, you know, we we've we've already enjoyed it. Yeah, here quite at a home. few kind of gossip and chats over this tea and can recommend. Um, what's what is next chronologically? Oof, chronologically is books, but I think we should do like a blast through the items that aren't books. Yes. So we went to Flying Tiger, which I shouldn't even mention whatever, but I bought this adorable little really candlestick holder um, really that I just couldn't not, it was like three pounds. Yeah. I got, oh God, every time I come to London, and there is no London connection to Stan Smiths, <laughs> but every time I come to London, I'm like, I should get a new pair of Stan Smiths because I use them to death. So I got a new pair and they're beautiful. They yeah. have the like pastel green celadon. It's my brother's favorite color. Is is that what it's called? Celadon. Wow. Yeah. Um, they're perfect. I love them. And what else did I? Oh, we also, there was like a little pop-up yeah. at one of the stores we were in. I got two really pretty rings, but I, I should- I haven't seen which ones you went for. <gasps> oh they're my goodness. so they almost good. Ah, get my out. <gasps> they match my conkin. They, they are really adorable. Do. <laughs> it's these little earrings that look like gummy bears, which I couldn't, I couldn't not. Yeah. So those are my happy well. little items, but you got some happy items. Yeah, so I have been wanting, I think I have done a video about my conkin before, but I am like yeah. a massive, oh, I should mention this. <gasps> Ariel got me a little necklace as a kind of a maid of honor gift. So Ariel got me this. And then when we were in Urban Outfits, which is not like, it's kind of a random thing to do, but I feel like we were kind of very stereotypically Listen, British it in was... the way that it was at like Oxford Street. We were doing shopping. We were shopping. Which we've never done we, together. We've never gone shopping really together. It was hilarious. You've done book shopping lots of times. Lots of book but shopping. Never. I bought shoes, you bought a bag. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were specifically looking for one type of bag and they were stocked at Urban Outfitters. Yeah. And it was funny because we were in there like realizing we were not youths anymore. Oh, <laughs> I have had that honest, I've had that realization so often when I go into clothes all the time. So I just, I don't belong here. No idea what's going on. It's just very... It all looks cold. Like you'd wear it, that clothing, and that, you'd be cold. That is the difference. When you go, <laughs> gosh, she will get hypothermia. Yeah. But I remember very distinctly how when you're young, like in your when you're a teenager and in your early 20s, right. you're okay being cold if you look good. Yes. It's I a don't thing. I think I ever Maybe that wasn't you. That. <laughs> um, so the reason I went to Urban Outfits is because I have a Konkan bag and I think it is how you pronounce them, Konkan? Yeah. I feel like potentially it is. Um, but I have like a, I think it's like okra, what I call like Van Gogh yellow. Mm. Um, and I love that kind of mustard colour, but I wear a lot of kind of yellow jackets and over time I've been noticing that I just clash massively um, and it, it's just not a great look. And so I've been, after getting a new one because I wear it every single time I yeah. leave the house. There's, I just love them. And as I said to Ariel, it is very much a lifestyle. And once you notice, one conkin. So many. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> suddenly has one. That's how I am with my Jeep. Oh, Jeep. right. Do you know that Jeep people all wave to each other? No. Have I told you about I don't that? think I've ever, I, I guess I don't really live in a Jeep area. No. Is what I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> London? No. no. <laughs> But yeah, in, uh, whenever if you're driving a Jeep and you see another Jeep, right. you wave. Like motorcycle. Oh, anyway, yes. Anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, should, can you imagine if I just that's start, besides if the I start wearing, like, waving at yeah, me? Everyone that's like, got a conk in. Yeah. yeah. So this, oh, beautiful stunning. color. Stunning. It wasn't the color I originally was, ever, I was really torn between frost green and sky blue. And when I say torn, I have been looking at this for, for months now. And when I was talking to Ariel about them yesterday, I had no intention of getting one this weekend. And I was looking for my phone and literally like 25 tabs were just So website. many tabs. Clearly you just have been agonizing over the decision for I months. Just, because I so rarely see them in person, I yeah. just wasn't ready to make the commitment. 
And then we saw this one and it was on sale, which obviously they're That was they're the expensive, biggest selling factor. But also, this is a colour that I 100% associate with Ariel. Like it is. As you should. <laughs> <laughs> and it just is beautiful and I love pastel colours. It goes with black really well, as you said. And I just, they are so sturdy. They hold mm. so much. They are so long lasting. And I just freaking love it. And it's now going to be like my wedding conkin. Yes. It's not going to be my, I'm not going to use it until we go up to York to get married and when I go on my honeymoon. Yeah. And every time I think of it, I'll remember shopping with you. That's lovely. So even though I it's not that. a book, still very valid memory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we do books now? Yeah. Is that next? We definitely should. I don't think I should. Should talk I do my I'm one? Not, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about all the books I got because there's too many of them and yeah, I, fair. maybe I should, you know what? I'll be good at marketing. I have a podcast oh. where I will haul them all so you Perfect. can go listen to that. But we both got books at Gosh Perfect. Comics. Yeah. This is one of my favorite bookshops in London. Many years ago, I made a video called my favorite bookshops in London and this featured in it. And we were in that area and I was like, oh my God, we absolutely must go. Um, is it an independent? It is an independent. Yeah, that's why I, so I, it's I, so crinkly. I, I, I could have waited to go to Watson's, but I thought, no, okay. No. So you get Support the indies. Yeah. Exactly. Rarely do it. <laughs> I got three. I didn't see. Oh, shit. I have that. Really? Yeah. Do you have the manga? Yes. <laughs> that's but so cute. more important to me because I love the actual book. Yeah. I read okay, well, it. clearly we should start there. Yeah. So the life-changing manga of Tidying Up, mm -hmm. that's so cute, by Maria Kondo. Um, really cute cover. It's such it. a cute, happy book, and I have read the original book. Oh, have you? Yeah. Loved it. I Me think too. I might have actually have read it twice. I'm not. I don't recall, but I really, really, really loved it. I actually gave it to my dad, oh. and he loved it. And he like cleared out so much stuff oh, in our house. I now organize all of my so I roll like her method. Yeah, like, everything looks. It's so good. It's so better organized. Um, clearly this was made for the West. Because it's manga, but it's told oh, in it's not back it's not backwards to us. But anyways, I was I saw this right at, as I was checking out, and I was like, just add that yeah. to the cart. Um, I got anything. this little Faber stories. Have you seen at, Faber stories before? Yes, I have. At there at the comic. Book. Yeah, because it's a it's oh, it's a comic. One. I've never I've seen never seen that before. either. I thought that was so cool. Um, Adrian Tomine is a really cool illustrator, and it's just like a single panel on each page, so it's gonna take all of is two that seconds what they call to read. It a panel? So yeah. Does, does my one have multiple panels? Is yes. That what you say? Cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know nothing. Um, and oh, then the this final is one. Gorgeous. I know. Oh, I love it. Don't go without me by Rosemary Valero O'Connell. I didn't know this was a thing. I right. really like this artist. She illustrated Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. Oh, yes. And you really enjoyed Julia Tamaki. Yeah. yeah. I really loved that. And so I thought it was cool that she's done her own yeah. solo project. Um, so I thought that was so pretty. And I don't know. Yeah, you can tell there's gold foil on there. Ugh. Ugh. I feel Stunning. Like I, because I really know nothing about graphic novels at all. I feel like whenever you've talked about them, I've on your channel. Yeah. It's like eye opening, because I just, it's just not, would you call it a genre or a type of format? What would you say? I guess it is a format, but there, I also do think of it as a bit of a yeah. genre. Because um. I, I do feel like it's, sometimes I feel a bit kind of, a bit of imposter syndrome, because um. I don't know anything. So when I walk in, it's yeah. kind of like, but also what's really good to remember is that some people feel like that just in any bookstore and yeah. sometimes I have to remember that. If you know as a bookseller, I was like, actually, this space isn't comfortable with everybody. And yes. once you know that, it's you really change I think. But yeah, that's when a good I went point. into that, um, the store, I was very much like, I do not know what to look at. I was like, I don't know where mm -hmm. to. And because I was feeling it, I just kind of shoved myself at like a, a shelf. A shelf. And then I saw Heartstopper. Yay. Um, which is obviously really, really famous. It's on Netflix now. Yes. I also saw it because I just bought a Konkin and obviously it's a Konkin. Konkin. <laughs> and I am reading so much more romance fiction at the moment. I'm freaking loving it. I've just heard so many good things about this volume one. And I really don't read graphic novels. And I feel like if I'm going to start, I'm reading in a romance fiction reading this, at the moment. This so. might be the perfect graphic novel for someone who hasn't read graphic novels perfect, before. It's that's so new. accessible, easy to read very happy and it yeah. has a very nice plot that momentum it has okay, momentum cool. very easy to i read. yeah alice and um, osman i've really wanted to read several of their books so yes. i feel like especially what's the one loveless, loveless i really want to read yeah um and i kind of 
because it, it's such like almost a cult phenomenon. Like everybody. Oh, it is. Lo everybody. The loves community that likes Heartstopper is a very intense yeah. community. <laughs> so I am. I'm also luckily a very intense person. So <laughs> I will fit right in. Um, but yeah, I just think it's. I'm really excited and. It's just kind of, I think I like, I'm so rarely a part of a hype. Mm. So I would love to You join the hype. Yeah, and kind of be moment. able to watch it and people respond to it. Because everyone's yeah. been talking about it and I, you know, the majority of my authors are dead, let's be real. Yes. So the hype is, Virginia Woolf has not been, you know. Well, I was going to say, oh. I, could, I could haul one more. Yeah, yes, please and do. And I should uh, haul Mrs. Dalloway. So it's funny because I actually already own a copy of Mrs. Dalloway that I bought with Claire eight years ago. But when I bought that one, these editions did I not exist. I can't even remember you buying that edition in, in Miss Birmingham. It was in the Birmingham one that used to be a bank. Yes. And that is now an Apple store. I know, it's closed. Disgusting. To be fair, they had two water stones within a stone's yeah, throw. So get rid of the ugly one. I agree, but it was bigger. Was Either it, way, yeah, it was crazy I, that they ever had two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so close, but that was such a beautiful it was, experience. It was one of the best of water stones yeah, that 100%. I've ever been to. Um, but yeah, these didn't exist back when we were young, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I saw this one, and I I own two other ones of these. Yeah. So I'm very slowly just kind of grabbing these, and I just thought I'm fair. with Claire. This is the perfect one to get right now. My the favorite novel. end papers are also yeah. Very I'm, pretty. I'm really happy because obviously Ariel's favourite book is Animal Farm, one of her favourite books is Animal Farm. And I that is my favourite, top yeah. number one. And I've not yet read it, but you also haven't read my no. favourite <laughs> novel. Which is I was Dalloway. about to be offended and I was like, never mind, I have no ground to stand <laughs> on. But also what was funny when we, yesterday, I will insert a few clips from when we went for dinner and then we went to... Um, Along kind of the the canal, we, we oh, yeah. word, word on the water. Yes. Um, and I think we were talking about kind of how um, I would only read Animal Farm as a joke. I would only read Animal Farm when you read Mrs. Dalloway. Unfortunately for me, this could be happening quicker than this. Yes. Well, I've got <laughs> now my you fresh have, new now copy. Now have a nice copy. Um, but yeah, it is my favourite novel, and it is a book that I feel like is so fundamental to my being that it's actually quite stressful when someone says they're going to. I feel Even the exact same way with Animal Farm. I'm mm -hmm. almost like, don't read it. I, think, <laughs> I don't want to know that you didn't love it. <laughs> I think I'll enjoy it because socialism. Yeah. Um, and the kind of the plays with that. But I also feel like um, I really like George Orwell's nonfiction. So Down Out in House Learning is one of my favourite books of all time. Oh, I didn't know I that. I really love it. But I did not like 1984. But I did study 1984. And Stressful book. It That's just, a stressful book. <laughs> I mean, the, the first line is must be one of the the best opening lines in all of literature, but it just wasn't something that I like really loved. In fact, I actually did study down at Paris London as well, so maybe it was the best studying it, and maybe I just don't like 1984. <laughs> yeah. But maybe I'll love Animal Farm because, you it's know. short, it's interesting, and it's tough. Tough? I mean, emotionally. Not tough to read, very easy. Do you want to talk about Tim Tams? Oh, yeah. Well, I can <laughs> But I feel like they're set up with Tim Tams. There is okay. a long history. I, should, I, should I say why Tim Tam for me, personally, my connection? Yes. So when I was at HarperCollins, um, one of my colleagues, Mel, who I just, I loved, um, and she was my manager and she was a brilliant mm. manager. But anyway, she is Australian. And so when she went to Australia, she came back after like, I think Christmas thing, and she bought Tim Tams. And in, especially in publishing, and I'm sure lots of offices, um, we had kind of different sections where you were almost in like a cubby hole and there'd be a section where people would put cake and biscuits, people would bring things in. And so Mel put them there as if for everybody. And I had one and then I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa. Just, and I literally started the point when I like would do it so sneakily. So it, it became like it wasn't me. I was kind of trying to make it out like it was other people from the other departments who were maybe taking the Tim Tams. But because it wasn't mine, and obviously they were Mel, I couldn't be like, Mel, listen, I'm going to have to take ten of these. <laughs> Luckily for me, she bought two packets, but I don't think she, Mel understood how yeah. much of an emotional impact. So Tim Tams are like, like a penguin biscuit in the UK, mm. um, but they are so much better. Like, I'm, I like penguins, sure, but Tim Tams are incredible. They're where it's at. And in Canada... They're they just around. Tims. Yeah. They're it's just really had... odd because they're Australian, right? Yeah. You mentioned the Tim Tams, and yeah. I didn't say to you that we had them in Canada. Because right? I was like, I'm about to see you in a few weeks. I'll go buy some at the grocery store and surprise you with Tim Tams. Right. So then, 
I went and bought you four packages of yes. Tim Tams, got them to my house, and then over the following weeks, ate all of them with my mom. <laughs> like, it was like, <laughs> as I was saying to you, it was like the beginning of Sense and Sensibility when Fanny is convincing her brother that surely her his father didn't mean to you that you have to give them a thousand pounds and then an hour later is like I don't even think that he meant to give them 500 pounds and then by the end of the day it's like I don't even think that you're supposed to like look at them <laughs> that's exactly what it was like I was like you know what I don't need to give her four packages of Tim Tams and then I was like two is a very reasonable amount to give a friend and then by the time it was down to one I was like you know it's pathetic to even now to give one package, so I should just finish it and buy her new ones. And then I didn't, I ran out of I think, time. I think the bad thing was that Errol came, my partner, obviously Ben loves Reese's pieces and things. Errol came with loads of things for Ben. Yes, you know? I gave him a bunch of Reese. And then- I gave it, you nothing. But I didn't expect anything. But that you then told me this look at the Tim Tam and just become, I don't think I have laughed that hard in years. Yeah. Because basically I gave him so much Reese that it was like clearly unbalanced. And so I had to explain why she wasn't getting anything. And it was because I ate it all. It, what I loved it was that it was you and your mum. Yes, you know, me and my mom ate them all. And so then I made up Different for it. Times. I made up for it. I have now brought you all the Tim Tams yeah. you deserve. So This is a perfect segue for me to talk about the new love of my life which I will now be doing my nook to. <gasps> yes, a final conclusion. My little cake. So we went to, you have to, you have to say it for me because I don't have to pronounce it, what is it? E-N-N-L. Very so, complicated yeah. name. So they have several cafes in like London and Paris and different places, but I've never been. Yeah. And there is one in St. Pangos Station and it's just very pink. So it's very Instagrammable. They have <laughs> it a whole- It is very pink. Yeah, which is not normally my scene, I have to say. <laughs> Um, they have a whole section which is like Instagrammable lattes and it's obviously very for a certain demographic. Yeah. Um, AK influencers, which to be fair, like I will take pictures of everything I eat. Yes. You know, yes. So I understand. So I wasn't like expecting it to be, we just kind of went there because we just wanted a drink. Like it wasn't yeah. a big deal. Yeah, we wanted like a hot chocolate. And I had this, I'm going to insert footage <laughs> because um, genuinely it's the best thing I've ever had of a raspberry cookie. Which well, it's funny how you even word that. You're saying you had it. <laughs> I bought it and I gave you some of it. I've forgotten that. I've I know you've mine. forgotten that because it, the amount of obsession that over the last two days Claire has had with these cookies. So afterwards, after she like demolished half of mine, which I gave her happily, you then went and bought another one to bring I, home. Oh yes. I did. Did I eat? Yes. Oh, did you I then, give it to Ben? That one though. You gave it to Ben and then you had some of it. Yes. And then today you've bought a third one. It was one. very kind of me to give it to Ben because I don't think I feel that generous now. It was phenomenal. Phenomenal. It was, it was... I liked it, but I... I was, <laughs> me and Ben were both like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> they deserve all of their Instagram followers. I, I looked outside and they were obviously like, um, when we went today to the, my second visit, um, they had like lots of kind of people who you could tell were there to take pictures, which is fair. But I was like, these people are very serious. They obviously haven't experienced the true joy of these oh. cookies. I was always ready to give all these give posh, cookies yeah. to all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and one for you. I was the Oprah of, yes, the, of the raspberry cookie. If you go, please, honestly. <laughs> They don't need this promo, but you're giving it to them. <laughs> but the thing is, when you see somewhere that is so set up for Instagram, you think, mm, you it's going to be dry. It's yeah, gonna be, they're going to focus gonna on good. the aesthetics, not on the flavor. The taste was But the, the hot chocolate was so good yeah, as well. Yeah, because that was also proper chocolate in there. Like, it wasn't powder. Like, yeah. it was really good. It was great. But the cookie is delicate and... <laughs> Like moist but in a good way. All she does is talk about this cookie now. <laughs> it's your whole personality. I'm, I am honestly, I'm fine with that. It's <laughs> the fact that I literally am now thinking that I'm gonna go again <laughs> next, next time. I'm in that station so often. Right. I think they're expensive, but to be fair, you pay for quality. <laughs> <laughs> and my god, 
I also did try and buy a mug just because I was like, listen, I need... <laughs> this is your new brand. I need a souvenir because the cookie is temporary. I want something <laughs> that will Permanent. stay with me for... I, we, we saw today on a way in, if like a tattoo parlor and I was like, we're lucky I didn't come back. <laughs> I love, I love eel <laughs> <laughs> raspberry cookie for life. It oh was amazing. God. Anyway, obviously I love my conkum and it looks, <laughs> but honestly, I've got the half of it now to eat. We're gonna go and get Wagamama's, which is your favourite food. Yeah. Um, yes. And I've got the rest of that cookie. We'll have some tea. It's gonna be lovely. And then next week, well, it's like a week and a half away. You get married. Yes. So it's exciting. It's really soon. So exciting. It has been so long. I must have asked you to be my maid of honour. In 2019? In 20, yeah, or 2018, whenever I got engaged. Did you get engaged in 2018? Yeah, January 2018. Right, so yeah, it would have been, you would have asked me yeah, in 2018 and it's 20. Wow. Wait, who knows? We can even stay friends. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> funny because, it's true actually, but it is funny because I, <laughs> like, cool. being Claire's maid of honour mm -hmm. has been a part of my personality for four <laughs> years. What are we going to do when... <laughs> But it's over. You'll have to be my maid of honor. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who can just flip? And now you've said flip. that on like that is I have to be at least some member of the bridal party. Yes. Oh, absolutely. If I do the catering, you know what it'll be. <laughs> so I'm getting married, um, which everyone knows, but I'm excited. And you're going to be here off to Paris, and then you're in York. Yes, my... because obviously, for me, Wedding. coming over to Europe is kind of a big deal because I yeah. live in Canada. Um, and so when I come over here, I always expand the trip a little bit to hit up some more spots. And for the entire pandemic, the place I've been fantasizing about visiting is Paris. It just became like a fantasy escape mm -hmm. place for my mind. Um, and I was like, I'm going to Claire's wedding and I will also do a week in Paris. So yeah. I'm really excited. I haven't, I haven't been back in a few years, obviously. Yeah. So I'm it really excited. Show. Yeah. You know, I in Paris. <laughs> There. Cafe. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the montage of our afternoon tea and our little day, day out. out. And um, I guess the next video that you will see Ariel <gasps> in will actually be my wedding day. It will be my wedding. I can't wedding. believe it. I know. I can't Neither believe can it. I. <laughs>